next short talk uh, is from Alex Wong. Uh, Alex joins from Sydney, I believe, and uh, is presenting the SpliceWiz package. Uh, we'll just get you set up and... Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, my name is Alex Wong. Um, I'm from the Gene and Stem Cell Therapy uh, Program uh, uh, at the Centenary Institute in Sydney. Um, and um, my talk will be about my uh, new R package, SpliceWiz, um, how to make life easier for yourself uh, if you wish to do alternative splicing analysis and visualization in R. Um, just a bit of um, background. Um, on what is alternative splicing. So in most genes, um, at the DNA level, the genetic information isn't contained in one single block, but rather as multiple discrete blocks um, called exons, interspersed by intervening sequences uh, called introns. When the genetic information is passed down from DNA to RNA through RNA transcription, um, introns are removed um, during a process called splicing, uh, forming a mature messenger RNA. Um, some exons, however, can be included or excluded um, through an alternative definition of introns during splicing, what is known as alternative splicing. And this is important, at least, not at least in part, because these different isoforms can form different proteins, uh, some with different and sometimes opposite functions. Um, there are seven basic forms of alternative splicing, which kind of kind of describes how exons, parts of exons, or even introns can be either included or excluded from uh, messenger RNA. And one approach for um, quantifying alternative splicing is to focus on reads that can only belong to either one or the other isoform. And these are generally reads that um, map across exon uh, junctions or, or splice junctions. Um, for example, in this uh, skipped exon example, we can estimate included or excluded uh, isoform abundances by their splicer civic reads and compute a metric called the percent spliced in, which is uh, the fraction of included um, uh, abundance over that of included plus excluded um, isoform abundances. Um, so we wish to um, create a R package that, um, that we can perform alternative splicing in R. Um, and one of the main hurdles was to, tr to use R to process BAMs in a, uh, with high computational efficiency um, and perhaps with some multi-threading. Um, secondly, um, because of the abundance of um, statistical analysis packages already available in R and R bar conductor, we wish to use isoform specific reads to perform a generalized linear model based differential analysis. Uh, we wanted to uh, produce a powerful alternative splice event visualization. And uh, last but not least, we want um, our wet lab colleague scientists to be able to um, use uh, the program as well. We want to share analysis with them because you know, they are high stakes in um, the, the analysis. And I mean, I'm, as a wet lab scientist myself, sometimes you, you, you find you do an analysis and you have these top hits and then you give them to your colleague and then he comes back to you and it's like, what, what, why, why can I not um, validate any of these top hits you've given me? So it's good to have them to have a stake in the analysis as well. And uh, especially for, for most of these people um, that don't wish to write any lines of code. Um, so as, as a starting point, um, um, my predecessor, uh, William Ritchie, in our lab, uh, created a, a um, 
command line utility called IR Finder um, that, um, that analyzes um, intron retention levels in, um, in RNA sequencing. And at its core, IR Finder um, decompresses the data in the BAM file using the Linux gzip command line and passes and uh, pipes the data onto a C subroutine, um, producing um, statistics of splice junction or intronic coverage counts. Um, which are then used to calculate uh, intron retention or IR levels. Um, as a starting point to create SpliceWiz, um, I modified the source code from IR Finder um, uh, such that it is compatible with RCSPP um, that does the same functions. But one of the initial hurdles is how do we optimize the step where we decompress the BAM files? Can we, can we um, multi-thread this process and thereby multi-threading the, the subsequent process where we actually process the reads from the BAM files. Um, so in tackling this problem, I created a pipeline that I then developed into a developer resource, which is now available in Bar Conductor called OMPBAM, which is a funny name, but you'll understand why it's called that later. Um, two main steps in OMPBAM. The first step is the function called fill reads, and that, um, um, allows that instructs OnBAM to um, do some asynchronous um, thread management where we use one thread to read the compressed data from the BAM file into an intermediate uh, buffer um, containing compressed data. And the remaining N minus, N minus one threads um, at the same time decompresses data that was already um, imported in a previous iteration of field reads. Um, so that optimizes the, 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 the file reading and also um, decompression in terms of computational efficiency. In a second step, which is also a step that um, we allow developers to interface with uh, through an open MP based parallel for loop um, is to uh, read uh, the, the decompressed buffer um, in, a thread, in a thread safe manner. And um, the function supply reads um, requires the, the input variable to be the, the number of the thread. So um, each thread can only access uh, mutually ex exclusive chunks of the decompressed data. So there's no race condition. Um, so um, on BAM, as I said, is um, available in Bar Conductor. Um, it facilitates um, multi-threaded reading of environments um, uh, for developers using RCPP, uh, using M open MP based um, uh, multi-threading, uh, hence the name OpBAM. Um, as I said, um, behind the scenes BAM decompression so that users can just focus on analyzing the reads themselves and not worry about how to decompress a BAM file. Um, and there's a full documentation and a worked vignette for those who want to try it out. Um, so SpiceWiz is a sophisticated user of OpBAM already. Um, the next a step I wanted to tackle was we wanted to retrieve um, sequ RNA sequencing coverage data as well. Uh, and should we use a third party program to do that? And in the end, we decided no, because we already created a utility that can efficiently read BAM files. Why are we using a, a probably less efficient way of doing like reading the reads again? Um, in the end, I opted to piggyback on the um, subroutine I regenerated and output the um, alignment coverage and it's strand specific because RNA sequencing these days is um, strand specific into a, um, a file called a cuff file, which is a format that I created. And very similar to BigWig file in the sense that it's a uh, BGZF gzip compression, just like a BAM file. It's also self-indexed, so that facilitates a fast random access. Um, but uh, with cuff file, it's integrated into the um, quantitation pipeline already. So there is no second reading of the same file. And so it's much faster. And it also uh, stores strand specific coverage. So unstranded, positive strand or negative stranded coverage as well. Uh, one thing we didn't implement is the um, web-based remote access um, compatibility with BigWig because this function is not required for uh, the SpliceWiz package. Um, so we did some benchmarks um, uh, looking at the BAM processing time and SpliceWiz is kind of on par with command line 
alternative splicing utilities and orders of magnitude faster than the, uh, the mo most popular bar conductor uh, tools that analyze alternative splicing directly from BAM files. Uh, it will also um, benchmark cup file generation compared with the, um, uh, I think the fastest uh, available utility to create big wick files on art by conductor. And um, it's, although it's slow on a single thread, it is multi-threaded and, and keep in mind, this occurs at the same time as that. So the additional time is uh, almost zero. Um, so I just want to go into the details of the GLM-based differential analysis, but we did some benchmarking of accuracy using a simulated data set. And uh, uh, SpiceWiz is at least as good as RMATS and um, is superior to SOPA2, which are two of the other popular uh, command line um, uh, alternative splicing tools. Um, visualization of um, alternative splicing, um, a popular way of visualizing alternative splicing is to use a, what we call a sashimi plot, where we um, have the horizontal axis uh, as the genomic axis and the vertical axis denotes the depth of sequencing coverage at each base. So you can see that um, exons have def uh, usually have high coverage, um, introns have zero or low coverage, and alternate exons, which is this one here, uh, can have variable coverage depending on the inclusion rate or the PSI. Um, this is a uh, example of two control, the top two are control samples and the bottom two are splicing factor knockout samples of um, TRI2A and TRI2B dual knockout, uh, which is known to cause um, uh, exon skipping. And I'd like um, you all to focus on this second exon here. And if you plot the uh, sashimi plots individually, it's hard to appreciate that the bottom two uh, exon coverages are lower than the top two. In SpliceWiz, we use, uh, we use a normalization method uh, by normalizing by the transcript depth across the um, splicing event, um, such that we can combine um, the, the coverage plots by um, the biological conditions control. So all three control and all three knockouts uh, samples. Um, and the utility of this is that if you overlay one across the other, you can definitely see the difference that the control in red is higher uh, than that of knockout. And you can perform a t-test between the, the two groups to show that this alternative uh, exon is significantly differential differentially covered um, and the, the other two flanking exons less so. Um, just showing off the splice with uh, graphical um, uh, user interface, um, you can run every step of the splice with analysis using the GUI. Um, three lines of code, not zero. You have to navigate to the um, project directory. You have to load the splice with library and then you um, call the splice with function and it brings up the, the, the shiny dashboard base GUI. Uh, we designed a um, little applet that allows us to interface with the Ensemble FTP uh, database. So users can select the Ensemble release and the species of interest, and then uh, it automatically obtains the F FTP um, addresses of the genome and uh, GTF files. Um, this is a... Um, we use a high, our hands-on table to give an Excel-like interface so users can annotate their samples um, interactively. And this annotation is then used to perform on-the-fly differential analysis using a range of tools. I think there's Lima, there's uh, a DSEC2, um, and it's, I've also recently implemented Saturn and EdgeR as well. Um, we can visualize these events um, we can use a range of tools to select our events of interest. So in this volcano plot, we select the most significant events. We can alternatively visualize the same events using a scatter plot, which is an XY plot comparing the PSI levels of two different conditions. Um, we can use a lasso tool to select more um, events of interest. And then we can view the individual um, values of these events using a heat map. Uh, so here we're selecting the results that we selected using the lasso plot. We can annotate them by the cell type and replicate uh, annotations that we had given them. 
um, we can mouse over the values, we can change the color palette. Instead of um, PSI, we can do legit PSI or Z score. Um, and the coverage plots are also what I would call IGV like. You can um, um, change some overlays, um, you can zoom in, uh, you can zoom out. Um, uh, I think we're running out of time. <laughs> Let's finish quickly. And um, here we can, um, instead of plotting individually, we can plot by condition. As I've shown before, we combine um, the coverage by condition. And then we can stack the traces so that you can see that this exon is the differential exon. Um, and yeah, um, so um, much of this is um, further explained in our, our bioarchive preprint um, for those uh, interested in the nitty gritty details. And um, I'd like to thank my um, three co-authors, uh, Professor John Rasko, Dr. Justin Wong, uh, two of, both of which are my PhD supervisors uh, from which this work has arisen. And also um, Professor Urs Schmitz, um, who is a collaborating bioinformatician who uh, co-conceived this project. And also uh, William Ritchie, who uh, was the initial author of the IR Finder um, tool. And here's where I embarrass my colleagues. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you for your attention and happy for um, feedback and questions. Quick question from the room. Um, just gonna get set up for the next talk. Uh, Brad, you have your slides. <laughs> Thanks. Great talk. Um, it seems like some of these things you're doing would be sort of super useful in other things like reading a BAM file quickly or getting coverage quickly. So uh, is there any prospect for these to sort of be available like to other bioconductor packages? Maybe uh, things like getting the coverage, yes, I think the usual type would be an RLA list. Yep, so there are um, functions that you can call um, that doesn't do the analysis and just creates the cuff file. And then you can import the cuff file as an RLE list file, which you can then export as a big wig if you so wish. Um, and, um, and if you want to open BAM files to do other things, then if you are a developer and familiar with RCPP, then we're free to look at the vignette. Uh, there is a fully worked example of how to, we, I think I reproduced the IDX stats function in from SAMP tools package using OpFab. Awesome.